think about the two of us going on a magical adventure through time and space. Me and you. Nista and yo ass. Riding on a unicorn like Toothless and Hiccup. Ooh. We fly over the mountains as we look into the sunset glistening on the ocean. Oh. I lean back and I look at you and I say, I'm going to noodle your caboodle. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to Popeye's this time. We pull up to the restaurant. As we walk inside, we get that delicious smell of the crispy golden delights. Yes. We go up and we say, give me a chicken sandwich and some fries. And the waiter looks at you and says, or the cashier guy, whatever. He says, that'll be nine ninety eight, And that was a dollar less than what you thought it would be. So you look up at the sky. You look at the ceiling. And you say, how convenient. I thought it would be a dollar less. <laughs> if you're in a line at Subway and you're watching this on your phone, <laughs> then bust down a whole ass break dance in front of everybody. And when the authorities remove you from the premises, just show them this little clip and say, bro, it's all good, man. Check this out. And then he'll start dancing with you. <laughs> Flying through space, zooming past the stars. You look over at the sun and you see a big, giant, galactic sized hand come from around. You look up in awe and it's a boy bigger than the sun. He looks at you and says, who the fuck are you? You look at him and say, I'm just a passing traveler and I mean no harm. He looks at you and says, no shit. You're the size of an ant. <laughs> but I'll make a deal with you. If you can guess my riddle, I will grant you one wish, but fail and you will get the curse of the sun gods. And you look back at the sun god and say, I accept your challenge. What is the riddle? He says, what's green and has wheels? You stop for a moment before the first thing comes to your head, a garbage truck. The sun god looks at you and says, wrong, it was grass. I lied about the wheels. You say, that's not fair, Mr. Sun God. That's complete fucking horseshit. <laughs> Straight up wrong. <laughs> Borderline evil. Sun God says, I don't give a rat's ass. <laughs> now you must be cursed. With the curse of the Sun God. And with one pleading face, you get on your knees and say, Please, Mr. Sun God, show mercy. He says, nope liver disease <laughs> you say what <laughs> liver disease he says <laughs> He's, he says with the confidence in his voice but Mr. Sun God please why liver disease he says you got it wrong you float backwards away Letting the empty vacuum of space guide your path from now on as liver disease <laughs> is the only thing keeping you company. <laughs> oh my god, lads! We flying in the clouds! We flying through the stars! We going around planets! We gonna go down, damn it! Have I been that good for Christmas? That's what happened, lads. Santa Claus came down the chimney 
and he looked at me in the eyes and said, you know what? You've been a good boy. I said, oh, thank you, Santa. What's my gift? He said, lad, I got it for you right here. What? Let me tell you a story. It's summer, 1982. The man is walking to school when he sees a boy. It's the bad guys from Diary of Wimpy Kid 1. It's the same guys. It's just that now they're in the 80s. And they see you. And they chasing you down, lads. You're running. You gotta pick up the pace. Because they're on their fucking way. And they're gonna fuck yo ass up today. They running down the street. Running down the street so they can fuck yo ass up. You look over the horizon. And you see they red ass pickup truck. Flying at you. Oh boys, they're pissed. You stand your ground. You stop running. You look at them in the eyes and you say... Fuck you. Flying through the planets. Passing the sun god. And giving him the finger. Because he gave your buddy liver disease. Yes. Orbiting Saturn's rings. Yeah. I want you to think about like an Arabian temple. I. And there you are. In fucking rags. Getting dragged in by the authorities. You look all around. You see hieroglyphs. And then at the end of it all is a stack of bones, a stack of bodies. And on top of it is a man, the king of all men. And he looks straight at you and says, I'm gonna give you bone cancer. You say, no, Mr. Sir, please. I'll do anything. And he looks back at you and says, nope, bone cancer. <laughs> There's no, no way around it. <laughs> but then you get back up. Okay? You say, no, I'm gonna stand up for myself, my boy. I'm not taking your shit from no one. Okay? You push away the guards. Alright? And the king looks at you in disgust. You wipe yourself off. Okay? You wipe yourself off and you look at him dead in the face. You look at this man who has proven in front of you with the chair that he is sitting on that he has murdered dozens and you look at him dead in the eyes and you say fuck you you take a run for it my boys you run out the temple into the blazing sun you look back here comes the king and all the king's men chasing you down and then he shits himself because this one sounds like piss you look back and you see all the men Ooh, now we got a chase. They start running. They're running at you at full fucking speed. Now we got a chase scene. Okay, what's good? Oh! You're walking down a dark alley. Yes. The dripping rain falls from the gutters above. As you walk down, the only thing illuminating your path is the moonlight and distant car headlights yes at the end of it all at the end of the long narrow passageway of brick and stone <laughs> you see a man a dark intimidating silhouette he starts walking towards you as you ask him what his name is and you say who are you bitch he begins to run at you faster now. You take off running, not knowing his intentions. But as you look back, you see him getting closer and closer with each passing moment. You look back one last time as you run through the alleyway with your feet stomping in the puddles. 
you look back and he's now gone. In a moment of relief and shock and confusion, you stop for a breath before continuing to run again, but then you run into him and he is standing right before you. Yes. You back up and you stumble backwards. You say, holy fucking shit. Like, oh my god, what the fuck type of shit. And he says, lad, you have fallen into my trap again. You say, Mr. Sir, please, what you, what, what the fuck is going on? And he says, I want to tickle your bunghole. You say, what are you talking about? He says, I want to tickle your bunghole. This is the bunghole alleyway. <laughs> Anyone who comes through here must get their bunghole tickled. You say, my boys, this is fucked up. <laughs> you have died. Everything went black. Upon waking up, you see yourself surrounded by red stone floors and the burning heat of fire around you. You have no idea what's going on as you hear the screams of people from afar. A big red boy comes up to you and says, I'm the Lord of Hell. You say, oh fuck, no way. He looks at you and says, Homie, you had one chance on Earth, and you fumbled it. You fumbled the bag. You say, Mr. Mister Satan, please. Please. I didn't know. He says, bitch. I will make you a deal. If you can beat me in a challenge, then I will let you leave. And maybe even you will be led into the gate of heaven. But if you fail, you will be stuck down here forever with me, realizing that you have no options. You accept his test. Satan turns around and reaches in his pocket. Perhaps a torture device. Perhaps something to make you feel emotionally painful. Some, some kind of sick, twisted thing that he's got cooking up. He pulls out the board game Ludo, or Parcheesi if you're Mexican. <laughs> he says, if you can beat me in Parcheesi, <laughs> you can live and leave to tell the tale. You accept his challenge. And without any hesitation, Satan fucking folds you. <laughs> and now you live your life surrounded by fire with horns coming out of your heels so that you must always walk on your toes never getting to rest your ankles and a brain tumor the size of an extended pufferfish constantly between your eyes <laughs> it's fucking dark later that day the devil went down to Georgia he was looking for a soul to steal he was in a bind because he was way behind he was willing to make a deal when he came across this young man sewing on a fiddle and playing it hot the devil jumped on a hickory stump and said boy let me tell you what I guess you didn't know it but I'm a fiddle player too and if you care to take a dare I'll make a bet with you now you play pretty good fiddle boy but give the devil his due I bet a fiddle of gold against your soul if you think I'm better than you you're the captain on a ship you and your crew you're out late at night trying to find the the rare vagina fish no relation as the moon rises it provides her only source of light the moonlight yes the only people who are there to help you find the vagina fish is you your crew and the light of the moon first mate squabble walls points out something amidst the ocean. A big ass fin on the back. The captain looks over and he says fucking shit. I think that's the vagina fish. We can finally get it and we'll be heroes. The captain looks over at his crew and says 
We're gonna run this bitch down. The vagina fish continues to sit there and lurk in the ocean, being covered by sheer darkness except for the fin, only to be illuminated by the light of the moon. You shove a harpoon through its fucking throat. <laughs> it was a great shot. Bullseye, cannon arm. The vagina fish jumps out of the water and lands on human legs. Scaring the fuck out of everybody on board. The vagina fish looks like a monster. It has two big muscular human legs and two big ass human arms with the face of a human on the front of it, but still resembling the overall shape of a fish, kind of like Darwin from Gumball, except mortifyingly horrifying. And it also has a picture of Antonio Banderas, scotch taped to his side. The fish doesn't even know it's there. I don't fucking know. The fish pulls the harpoon out of his neck like Deadpool does, without feeling any pain. He says, what the hell is this, lad? The captain looks over at the fish, I was just trying to catch a fish. The vagina fish looks over at the captain and says, Homie, that hurt like a bitch. What the hell is your problem? I didn't do shit to you. Captain says, I'm so sorry. We just want to bring you home to prove you're real. He says, motherfucker, I'll come with you. But only if you can pass my test. <laughs> Captain says, what's the test? We'll be heroes if we bring it back. Please, Mr. Vagina Fish, have mercy. The Vagina Fish looks at you with his human face and his fucking very detailed human hand and he strokes his chin. <laughs> I will come with you and I will place myself in your hands and I will not fight back. If you can guess the number of fingers I have behind my back. He showed up his hands and he only has five fingers. So it was a one in five chance of being a legend. The captain accepts the challenge as the fish puts his muscular hairy hand behind his back. He says, guess the number, putt. The captain looks at his crew with a confused look and says, four? The vagina fish looks back at him with a smug look and pulls his hand out of his ass, revealing that his hand now grew 21 fingers. His one hand grew 21 fingers. <laughs> the vagina fish looks back at the captain and says, now I have to curse you with the curse of Poseidon. The captain says, what? That wasn't part of the deal. The vagina fish looks back at him with an evil grin and says, Too bad, pussy. Now you must confront your inner demons of the sea and accept your fate. The captain says, What is, what is the curse? What is the curse of Poseidon that you are going to bestow upon me? The vagina fish looks at the captain and says, Iron deficiency. Captain says, what? <laughs> the vagina fish says with the confidence in his voice, iron deficiency. Before the captain can even process what happened, the vagina fish does an Olympic run and dives back into the darkness of the ocean, never to be seen again. And now the captain has iron deficiency. 